Get ready for a traffic mess that could snarl the commute for months in Seattle. A series of lane closures along Highway 99 begins just this week. And it is expected to create backups that could spill onto I-5 and all the surrounding surface streets. Call for us, Joel Marino, is live for us tonight along Highway 99 with a look at what we are going to face. Joel, fill us in. The traffic impacts there are likely to be significant, Michelle and Russ. They've already got the message boards warning drivers. Now, Monday night, crews will try to straighten a section of Highway 99 so it better links up with the deep bore tunnel. But the real problem is that's uh, when it's going to take a couple months to build up the foundations for informational signs for drivers using that north tunnel entrance. For the next few months, freely moving traffic could become a rare sight along Highway 99. Well, it's bad enough now. Long-term lane closures are about to begin, forcing commuters to share fewer lanes, but likely more frustration. It's going to make everybody's commutes a lot longer. Monday night, the Battery Street Tunnel will be off limits to northbound drivers, and Tuesday we'll see partial closures in both directions. On Wednesday, drivers lose one lane in each direction between Valley Street and the Aurora Bridge. The partial closure will last two months northbound, three months southbound, with few good options left for drivers. Everything's running at capacity, and as soon as there's a problem in one place, everything else is choked up. The partial closures will force Metro to share a lane with cars, slowing traffic as passengers get on and off. Obviously, that will be annoying if buses are stopping and then all the traffic has to stop and try and like squeeze around them. What is their plan to address congestion? City Council Member Michael Bryan challenged state transportation officials last month, questioning if enough was being done to deal with three months of increased congestion. DOT responded by arranging to post police officers at key intersections, having incident response trucks positioned to clear disabled vehicles quickly, and by keeping extra buses on standby during peak commutes. Drivers have one good option. I have to leave earlier. While this gets sorted out, city council members will receive a briefing tomorrow on the additional impacts if the viaduct has to be closed in an emergency. More than half the proposals to ease traffic have no money to back them up. Now again, all of this is to pave the way for the replacement tunnel, which has been held up by the birth of drilling breakdowns. The latest estimate on the project completion, late 2017. Reporting live here in Seattle, Joel Marino, Como4 News.